What is what it was like to practice with Tigger? What it was like? Yeah, I know that's a really hard. <laughs> I what was not, not, you know, uh, I don't know. I just love you so much. It's been huge yeah. influence on my ability to practice. And I, I have, yeah, never sorry. Nothing, okay. What it was like to practice with Tigger at home? Well, that's going to be different for everybody, isn't it? But. Um, I treasure the fact that I have had that experience and I admire so much the people that practice really diligently and happily without ever having sat with him. So I feel very, very fortunate about that. And what it was like was like I found my home now. Um, I have a path and it was at a stage in my life where there was <clears throat> deep trauma and a lot of stress. A lot of mud. Um, 1988, I was 40. Um, and that's kind of had a significance for me as well. And I knew it. this is a path that I was following. That's all. And being with him, yeah, I, I, I have made him laugh a few times, which I just treasure so much. He had a habit of being behind me when I didn't know. <laughs> that is weird. Really, three times, three times on retreats and in Plum Village, and in a house in Norwich where somebody had offered it as a home to our sangha. Um, I had said something really quite unmindful. <laughs> <laughs> I told Santam Chef, Santam Seth, like senior Dharma teacher living in England, reading tours and everything, and I ticked him off. And I heard this laugh behind me, and there was Tao with a handful of peanuts chuckling away. <laughs> And that, that's happened three times in my life, and I treasure those moments because, you know, very few people have had that. Very few people have been that close. And I, I know that that's another reason that time kept me. I must um, continue. I must continue time as a way of, um, as gratitude for how his practice particularly and the whole community um, helped me really make deep transformation in my uh, in my way of being and way of looking at things and way of being in the world and gave me a path to follow which I didn't have before. I'd like the Sufis, you know, I love the Sufis, poetry, all the rest of it, but I never wanted to join anything. But now, you know, I'm here now. <laughs> I think I'm going to stay. I think probably one more. One more question. Five minutes. Hello. Hello. Um, now that Mr. Hunt has passed, um, how do you see uh, the future of his legacy being? How his his practice will develop or grow? Or, or what's just the future of his, the movement that he started? How do you see that progressing? In what what's form? The I have faith, because he had faith, in the monastic sangha <coughs> and the lay sangha being, <coughs> having been given enough tools and enough teachings from him to be able to continue happily and wisely. I do have that faith because I've heard bits and pieces about communities and monastic and lay and knowing the kind of practices that Thai has invented, actually, they aren't rooted in long traditions, they are practices that he's come up with to suit the kind of Western intellectual media uh, hungry world. Um, that if they, if, 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 practice, if these tools are used, and everything will be fine. I can't say that it won't develop and change because it will. And that's the nature of everything, isn't it? But I do know that the monastic sangha and the lay sangha that he's left behind um, will, will go as a river, as he always advised us to do. And that's the key, you know, kind of way. I liked what the Sarah said to me about the, um, one of your festivals, uh, the community that was getting it together. Uh, they wanted to have music playing while they were working, 
and one of them said that she couldn't handle that, she needed silence, and so the, the group made a, an agreement that, okay, you know, if one person in the Sangha is unhappy, the whole Sangha is unhappy. You can't be happy while other people are unhappy. If you know the story of the Banyan tree deer, uh, if you want a story to um, illustrate true community Sangha mind, there's a very well-known Buddhist story called the Banyan Deer King. Um, so look at that because he saved a whole kingdom from having uh, its animals hunted. And basically he was given freedom, but he said, I can't be free if you're going to be shooting the birds of the air. Okay, said the king, okay, we're not shooting any birds anymore then. Off you go. No, 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 I can't be happy or free as long as there are fish in the rivers that you're going to hunt. Okay, said the king, you've got your fish, you know, what else do you want? Well, how can I be free if there every other four-footed creature in this country is going to be hunted with your animals? So, uh, finally, the Banyan Deer King got his wish that the whole of that land in India was then uh, uh, animal-friendly, at least. And apparently, there is still a, a pillar where this conversation between the king and the deer was held to say that this kingdom is now a safe, happy place for every living being. So I think it's easy to find. Uh, it's in a book. Um, I can't remember the name of the book or anything, but just Google, because it, it, there's a lot leading up to that conversation. But basically, I, I love that idea that if there's one person not happy, then everybody, we all, you know, we're all one person. So how can I be happy? I can be hopeful always. Yes? You're welcome. Well, thank you for being here.